Good morning everybody and welcome to the first of our coffee break series of webinars, 15 to 20 minutes, um, just picking up on a topical um, piece of software or new release or new ideas that we will go through with you every third Thursday of the month through to the rest of the year. So something to look forward to. Um, today's coffee break is what's new in Jet Essentials. And I really would like to welcome everybody to this very first um, event. There are a few housekeeping rules that we need to have in place. Um, I would ask you to keep your microphones uh, switched off. Um, the, um, we don't want to have too much feedback through the um, presentation. Um, I would also point out that we're not going to accept any um, questions at the end. Truth being, I'll probably need a coffee of my own by the time we get there. Uh, instead, I'd like you to send me an email uh, to john.gardner at cosl.co.uk. Um, my email address will be at the end. And finally, the webinar will be recorded and it will be available on our website probably around the beginning of June. So to progress, the well, topic is Jet Essentials 2012, which was recently uh, launched by Jet Reports. We were part of the uh, beta testing, and so we're delighted that it's now finally been uh, released and, and made available for everybody to download. There are four main changes that come into play. The primary one being the change to the JFX or the designer uh, functionality. Um, for those of you not familiar with it, this is the, the section that leads you as a wizard through all the stages of putting the uh, formulas together. Uh, there is new functionality on the uh, JET ribbon bar to connect to pivot tables if you're using JET Enterprise. And the area that I'm going to focus on today is primarily in relation to an enhanced table function, uh, which is uh, not exactly new to JET Essentials 2012, but has been substantially upgraded. I always said that uh, I would never do these series uh, as PowerPoint presentations. So one of the things I'm anxious to do now is to let's have a look at the software. And we're going to see the new JFX function, the NL table function. I'm going to show you the new favorites uh, functionality, which is working really well, and introduce you to both snippets and slices. So here we have a new uh, clean uh, jet reports uh, ribbon bar here at the top. And you can see the first thing that we want to show you here is this new pivot table function if you have Jet Enterprise. So for those of you who are currently using Jet Enterprise, simply clicking on this now will give you access straight to the respective cubes. Um, and once that connection is made, then using uh, Jet Essentials 2012 to report on cube data or data warehouse data should become very, very straightforward indeed. So there's the list of the six available cubes. Um, that took a disarmingly long time to come up, but um, essentially they're straight away available, all pre-calculated and ready to go. The functionality I want to show you today is primarily around the browser and the table function. So I'm going to click on the browser and the first thing you'll notice is that I seem to have a very, very short list of tables that I want to work with. If I switch uh, off favorites, which is what's running here, then you'll see the list of tables in nav down the left hand side, which you're familiar with already. 
And obviously, if you click on any one of those uh, table names, then you see all the fields. Now, that can be quite intimidating. So uh, you have the ability to create favorites. And if you click on favorites, then obviously you get this shorter list to work with. Now, I'm going to use the customer table today to show you the new table functionality. And the tats set up here on the browser uh, where you have the drop down list of the NL functions you'd like to run. And I've selected NL table. Now I'm going to select um, five fields here. Um, the first one is going to be the name field. Scroll down to the name field. And we're going to hold the control key down and then go up to the city field, to the country region field, and then down to the salesperson code and sales LCY. And then we're just going to drag this across and put it in cell D8. Now I'm going to close the browser now. We don't need it anymore. But what you'll see now is all that coding has been brought across. And in particular, you can see that the fields have been brought across in the name, in the order in which we brought them, as we tree selected them. So to quickly run the report, effectively what's happening here is we're running all the data from the customer table. Now in this instance, there's only 77 or so records, but potentially we could have well in excess of a million records, uh, in which case that'd be fine. It would take a bit longer to come across, but using Office 2010 as we are, that'd be much, much uh, easier. So we're going to format the cells to the numbers. And this is a way of doing very, very quick analysis on the numbers using standard uh, Excel functionality. Um, I can sort my numbers and check my numbers. So I only want to see numbers that are uh, not equal to zero. And it may well be that what I want to do is I want to sort from largest to smallest. And so very, very quickly, you can see that we can create um, an analysis and we can do sorting by name, by city, by country, region, code. Or indeed, what we could have done is we could have brought the entire table across and we could have done sorting on, on any field at all. Obviously, we're restricted here by the number of rows uh, and columns available. But in Office 2010, that's less of an issue than it is with Office 2003 and, and before. So to move on back to the Jet Ribbon Bar, I'm going to go back into design mode and connect to the table and introduce you now to the new function wizard. And this is the new look. This is where um, the what's, the table, and the fields are uh, shown. But the new look immediately is where we put the filters and the filter values side by side rather than going down the page. And it does make it much easier to, to work with. So the idea of this has been that it is um, allows features to be more easily discoverable, and it does make it more efficient. Here we can select the four formulas that we require. Um, we still have the drop-down buttons here to select the fields and everything else, the filters. Um, but I'm going to um, create uh, some new filters here. The first one I want to put in is a date filter. Now, one of the new features here is the ability to, if you wish to, is to search across the top. So if I type at the top where the cursor is, date, you'll see that it immediately brings up just those options that have the word date in. Date filter is the one I want. Now, it recognizes this as being a calendar field. And if I click on the down arrow on the filter value side, you'll notice it now gives me the option of a calendar. And that might be useful if you're looking in particular to a single posting date or a single date range. I'm going to key this in manually. So And there is another filter I want to apply, which is I know I've got um, some uh, 
uh, poor data in here. I've got a name field in uh, my Cronus database that's blank. So I'm going to eliminate that from the data. Um, so I'm going to put in effect not equal to blank as one of my options. Now there are other functions that are available to here. Um, the idea is too that if I want to use my favorites for my drop down list of fields then these are available. And if I want to use certain keywords, limit equals or headers equals or specify certain filters, I can do that from here as well rather than going into other places as in previous versions. Um, where we have special characters or where we wish to insert name ranges so then these become available to us as we move on to the filter value fields. So I'm going to click OK for this and rather than um, just quickly run the report to get something very similar to what we have before but this time we're going to take the analysis a stage further. If I click here um, we can now move on and effectively insert a pivot table. We specify it's coming from the customer table and we're going to create it in a new worksheet. Now I will start pivot tables by picking up the key value that I want to pick up first. In this case it's sales LCY. And I'm going to drag it down to the sum values field and you'll see that that's brought up there. And good practice says what we do to start with is we format that in the manner in which we want the data to be shown going forward. So that's immediately formatted. Um, and I would like to see the names of our customers. So here we grab name and we drag this down and put it into row labels. So immediately now I'm seeing a list of all my customers down the left hand side and the value of their sales and the period we're looking at here is January 2011. Now we don't necessarily want to see it in that data and as before I want to get rid of the data, the uh, zero values. So I'm going to go down to um, value filters and sum of sales not equal to zero. So now we're only going to see those where we have sales in the particular month. And again I'm going to sort this time, more sort options, because rather than sort by uh, row label or by customer name in that instance, uh, what we want to do is we want to have descending sort, but we want to sort by sum of sales. Click on OK and it gives us our uh, list of customers from the top customer at the top to the poorest customer, if that's the right expression, at the bottom. Now I'm going to click on pivot charts and introduce some uh, nice chart here and just simply by clicking on this we're bringing in new functionality and I'm just going to select my style of report and just make it fit my screen so that it starts to look like a proper report. Just line everything up across the top if possible. And having got our charts and our numbers and everything else, I'm going to now introduce you to slicers. So insert slicer, whoops, just click on here, insert and slicer. And we have a list of the field names that were available. And I'm going to bring in two at this particular point in time. Um, the first one is going to be the country region code and the second one person code. Click on these and these are, these are basically filters, um, visual filters and what it allows me to do, let me just shrink this bit, there we go. what it allows me to do is to get interactive if you like with the data. So at this stage I can say okay well what did JR sell 
and immediately all of that functionality is updated. What did PS sell? Um, I could switch those filters off and I can go and have a look. What did we sell in GB? What did we sell in Iceland? And it all becomes very easy, very interactive. We can see the percentages, we can see the charts, we can play around with the filters and get all kinds of analysis. And it becomes very, very easy to work with and very intuitive as well. Because you'll see here if I go to PS as my salesperson, PS only sells in GB. So all these filter options for the country region code are grayed out. Um, with the exception of GB, which is in bold color. So it is intuitive, it is interactive, uh, and it fits together very, very well. One of the final pieces uh, I'd like to show you is to go back to JET and drop back into design mode. And I'm going to insert, if you like, uh, four or five rows here because what would be nice is to have a header and we can create a header here. I'm just going to insert a column as well. We could create headers very, very easily by using the new snippets functionality. Now, if I click on this, so there's a whole load of snippets that we can use, but the one I just want to introduce you to quickly, if I may, is this basic report header, which is standard out of the box Jet Essentials 2012. And I click on that and bring it across, and I'm going to put it into cell B2. And what this is doing is it's bringing across a lot of functionality, which um, basically allows me to give my report a, a firm uh, standard look and feel. So my report is going to be sales analysis report. Um, and it's created obviously here. Um, by we just need to widen that slightly and maybe a bit more. Um, and I just need to reformat uh, the cell here to um, UK and custom format, so dating. And this is basically the date stamp so that we know when the report was run. And I can just simply update that report. And you can see we now have our corporate logo here at the top. We have our report, we have our um, uh, layouts and everything else. And we can move quite simply to see how our report runs, how we move between our different uh, um, filters. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, 15 minutes has gone very, very quickly indeed. Um, just to wrap up, um, we'd like to thank you for, for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me, john.gardner at cosl.co.uk. Um, for those of you who are Jet Reports designers already, you can go to the Jet support site at support.jetreports.com. If you're not ready